Actually, that's just the end of it. Um, but we actually have these electrodes that were for a TENS unit, and they have kind of a gel on it that kind of is conductive. There are so, a full wet, full wet um, this uh, anodally stimulates. Uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, where do you need the medical electrodes? Oh, yeah, they're for a TENS device. Which uh, like you were saying, TENS device. What is muscle it? stimulator. It's a yeah, muscle stimulator. Ah. It's meant for therapy of pain. some sort. Pain. For pain. Pain? Is that what it's for? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> I totally believe you. Who ever said that? So, um, okay, so now you have it. How often do you actually use it? Um, I use it uh, every three days or so. Um, so. I guess my video is not going to die anywhere, so that's not. But, uh, let's see if I can fix this real quick, because the video is going to be in the way. Okay, now, this is where the talk gets a little risque. Um, the grinder way, at least what we've been talking about and what I see on discussion boards and those sorts of things, is that we believe that intellectual property is uh, kind of like intellectual apples. They don't exist. There's no such thing. It doesn't, it's not real. And um, so we think it should all be open. And so when the FDA puts out a list of things that are waiting to be approved, we consider that a cookbook uh, of sorts. And when they say, you really, really shouldn't do this, we're like, wow, that sounds like they, it should be something really cool. We should totally look into that. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, patent trolling. Yeah, we totally don't. We don't care uh, if you thought about it vaguely in 1985 and you sent in something and now you're going to come and tell us that we can't do what we're supposed to do. Yeah, we don't care. We're going to do that anyway. Well, um, as long as you don't try to send it, it's right, going to be right. legal. Right, absolutely. Right, absolutely. Right, yeah. And we're not really trying to sell anything. Um, we're not trying not to sell anything either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, we like to take everything open source if we can. Uh, if not, uh, oh well, you know, that's, that's okay too. Um, we believe that hardware manufacturers are just testing our creativity and dedication. So when we go to look for a wireless charging circuit in one of the Oral-B toothbrushes that have had them since 1984, and we find that they have filled it with molding so that we can't figure out the secret sauce in their stuff, we know that they really just want us to try harder. That's what they're doing. It's a puzzle. They want us to fix it. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've heard a lot about, uh, you know, genetic patenting and uh, that sort of thing. And uh, I don't agree with that sort of idea at all. Uh, you shouldn't be able to patent genetics. It's at the core of a human being. And they're talking about putting it under the FDA's... Uh, you know, governance, and I think everybody should be a little concerned about that, because if you take a look at what it's done to the field of, you know, citizens doing chemistry research, it's all but shut that down. Citizen agriculture, citizens can't do pharmacological research of their own. I mean, there used to be, you used to be able to go to the chemist and mix things up, and I, I believe that that was a much more exciting time in science, you know, and, um, for forever, and I think that that's why you see that there were little pieces of time where people's minds and imaginations were captured by science, and there was a lot of people doing a lot of stuff that was really cool. And then institutions come and they ban everything and they put it in a small, tiny little box. And granted, things get safer and they slow down because innovation is dangerous. It's enough rope to hang yourself with, and it is it is a very um, kind of scary concept to let citizens do their science. But if you 
you think about it, you're talking about particularly the genetics, you're talking about what goes into your body. And people should not be able to patent cures that are on a genetic level. You know, if, if the cure is the right genetic code for some autoimmune disease, I mean, and somebody's just got that cure already in their genetics, I think it would, I think it would be a crime to say that person can't take it out and help that next person by giving of their, their own body. I mean, you, people give blood and it's considered one of the most noble things you can do in our society. It's a simple act of absolute charity. And uh, I think that they would rob us of that opportunity. Um, so, um, what's on the horizon? Um, well, for, for me and my group, um, we're working on a device called Gilead. It is an uh, embeddable LED display. It would have uh, several gigs of file storage, which would be transferable over Bluetooth. Uh, we have prototypes already. Uh, in the lab, we're working on wireless charging, which has been pretty much power has been the most difficult issue. The technology is small and there. Batteries are big and clunky and a problem, but you need them. You know, and uh, so that's been one of the things that we've been trying to get over, and we've actually, at long last, found a solution. So now we are getting ready to enter the testing phases and, and putting it through some what we can what we consider rigorous testing, which might not necessarily be as rigorous as some people might. Like. Um, the next device on our plate is a device called Southpaw. This is an embeddable that would have a compass. Uh, triple axis magnetometer, fancy compass, and uh, eight actuation points like the compass rose. If you're facing north, you feel a small pulse at the top. If you're facing south, you feel a small pulse at the bottom. As you're turning, it goes around. The interesting thing about this device is that it can be easily used to um, interact in, in various other ways, like for example, you feel sweeping motion this way, you just got an email, you feel a sweeping motion this way, you just got a text message, uh, pumping Google Maps to it so as you're walking along it just feels like it's time to turn left, so you do, <laughs> you know, those sorts of things. Uh, and that's definitely what we want to try to do. Um, and just simple subthermal LEDs, which we pretty much, uh, we have other than, again, the power issue and uh, wireless charging, which we would obviously be used more for artistic purposes, but very simple in, in concept. LED, power source, receiver for that so that it can be recharged, and a Hall effect sensor. You run your finger magnet over it, it turns on the lights. You run your finger magnet over it again, it turns off the lights. A uh, little row of LEDs on the chest or something, maybe outlining a tattoo, something like that. Um, I'm in talks with... Once we have the charging circuit uh, proved, we have it built, we don't have it proved. Um, I'm talking about getting a, uh, a gear beneath my chest that's backlit, and uh, you know, so it looked like Tony Stark from like Iron Man, you know what I mean? Because who doesn't want to be Iron Man? And if I can do that, for real, yes, I'm going to be Iron Man. Come on. Um, and genetics. We are very excited. We have found a recipe that we're very interested in. Um, supposedly, it will allow a human to see on, um, see slightly more of the ultraviolet spectrum, which I'm very interested in. So, but that's not my department. That's, that's somebody else's department. So we're really, we really are excited, but we do need to learn more. Um, in body modding, they're actually starting to move this way. Uh, they're starting to kind of come to meet us as well. So piercers, tattoo artists, they're trying to get themselves more extreme. They've done these functionless implants, but they're really starting, much like any art, right? You've got art, and you've got a statue, and that's awesome. But when you turn it into functional art, like a lazy boy, now you've got something really awesome. Right? And so functional art is where body modification wants to go. And of course that comes right into our wheelhouse uh, coming to meet us. Now what we've heard they're trying to do is basically lay out a pattern of fiber optics across somebody's forehead in a circuit pattern and they're going to pump light in through the temples, through the skin, and it'll travel through fiber optics creating a, a circuit pattern on this guy's forehead. Uh, art, not 
not very functional, doesn't do anything. Man, that looked pretty cool, I think. I don't know. Um, so, um, <laughs> questions? <laughs> Uh, he could say that uh, unlicensed person doing pharmaceutical <laughs> or chemical research is something illegal about it. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you even try to do even minuscule pharma pharmacological research, they're gonna be like, yeah, you're trying to make meth, and they kick your door down and they take all your money, and that's what they do. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it. You're not allowed to have any chemical precursors to anything that could make anything <laughs> remotely interesting. And uh, there's a lot of really interesting chemicals out there. And uh, I, I encourage everybody to use them, you know what I mean, at their discretion. You know what I mean? I think that people should be allowed to toy around with all of the aspects of their body. And that includes the way in which they perceive the world, you know. Um, I have definitely, I mean, I've used uh, Adderall for studying um, before, you know, that sort of thing. So, I mean, I think that, uh, I think that it's a good thing. So, does anyone want to talk about power issues? Is anyone doing research on, like, basically letting your body power, like, using your body's